to Friday nights with Emma. Uh, Mikey's on camera duties again today, so everybody say hi to Mikey. Uh, we'll just give it a couple of seconds, couple of minutes to let everybody join. Just give us a thumbs up or a little heart to let us know that you're watching. So yeah, uh, welcome. Tonight I'm going to show how to make cathedral windows. Now, there's a lot of pressing, a lot of folding involved. Debbie is watching. Oh, hi Debbie. Uh, Sarah is watching. Hi Sarah. Sarah. Joan is watching. Hi Joan. Your mum. Hello mum. Hello. So anyway, cathedral windows. What is cathedral windows? Well, it's it's not technically a quilt, but it is a special technique of, of that is considered quilting. But the there's no wadding involved whatsoever, and there's no actual quilting through the layers per se. So what we start off with, it traditionally it's a white background, so I've got white squares started off, and uh, Monty's, Monty's moaning already. Come on Monty, sorry. Yeah, he'll want to go back in the kitchen in a minute. Yeah, so folded squares. Um, it's a bit like, I don't know if you remember from school, when you used to make those little catcher things that you do with your fingers and how you fold them all over. They're folded a little bit like that. Unfortunately, I don't have a finished one to show you yet, so I'll just get started with the technique. So you need 10 inch, 10 inch squares of the background fabric that you want to use. Now I've gone with the white. And you need a nine, nine inch square of card. I just scrounged this out of the recycle bin. It was our cereal box. But nine inches square, so I just marked off the nine inches using my square ruler and then just cut it out basically. And that we we'll use this for is for pressing. So you don't have to, I've got some best press. You don't have to use best press. I'm just gonna add a little bit around the corners to Give it a little bit of definition. Margaret is watching. Oh, hi, Margaret. Kathleen is watching. Hi, Terry Kathleen. is watching. Hi, Terry. Joan is watching. Hi, Joan. Joanne and her mum are watching. Oh, hi, Maureen, Joanne. And Jackie, Jackson. Lorraine, Sarah, hi, Carol, Sarah, Margaret, Carol. Lorraine. Margaret, Lorraine. Hello. Chloe, Ross. Hi, Chloe. Sarah. Hi, Ross. Dawn. Sarah. Dawn. Diamond. Oh, hi, Dawn. Lori. Lori. Shannon. Karen. Hi Shannon. Hi Karen. The comments will be slow because I have to manually move oh, them up. Move them up. Yeah, I've got a new phone this week, so it may be working slightly differently than it has been. So I've got my template square um, on top of my my fabric. Now you'll see you should have a half an inch gap all the way around, and you just want to fold that over and press it. Seriously? He just came out. Yeah, I know. Hey, what is it with Karen and Christina are watching. Karen and Christina? Hi, Karen and Christina. Karen says, lovely crunchy nut. Oh, I yeah, agree. yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, Bar and Barbara is watching. We've been on a crunchy nut kick. Michael's just discovered it for the first time, I think. Yeah, that best press does help, actually, because I was doing it was out earlier and it kind of bounces back all regular starch robin starch that we talked about what was in the comments a couple of weeks ago that would work as well just make sure that it's all in your fabric and so it doesn't leave any flakes dawn is watching oh hi dawn Right, there we go. So pop that out carefully. So you've got it. Perfect nine inch square with pressed corners. So you need to find the middle is the next spot. So what I do is unfold it over. Annette and Pat are watching. Oh hi Annette. Hi and Pat. Jenny. Hi Jenny. So I'm just 
lining up my corners, my edge. So I want to get that middle, make sure I get the middle. So I'm just going to do a little press right in the middle, just to get a little crease. Just like that. And then I'm going to do the other side. Barbara says hi. Oh, hi, Barbara. Carol is watching. Oh, hi, Carol. There. So then you should have a cross. There you go. You should have a cross where it's pressed in the middle. So we just want to fold. I've got link hair on it, of course. Hillary is watching. Oh, hi, Hillary. And Jenny asks, what have we missed? Oh, what she missed the beginning. Missed the beginning. Okay, so what we've done so far, 10 inch squares of a background fabric. I've gone with white, but you can go with any color that you want. And a nine inch square piece of card. I've just used cereal box card just to press the edges over. And Jennifer is watching and Diane says sorry about being late, oh, no, but no, no, no worries. Yeah, no worries. Catch it'll, up. It'll be, yeah, it'll be all on catch up. I think what will probably be good for this one is if you watch it as, as is, and then if you really want to do it again, rewatch it and um, with a pencil and paper so you can write down all your dimensions. Uh, Lorraine asks, could you use a sew line glue pen? Um, you could, but you don't really need it, to be honest with you. Just pressing, just pressing is enough. It doesn't have to be, I mean, it might add a little bit of um, stability, but you're gonna have quite a bit of fabric folded over. So it might make it a little bit rigid. You're making an envelope. Yeah, yeah, basically. Uh, Sharon says the acrylic templates turned up many things. Oh, yay, you're welcome, good, well enjoy. And please do send pictures of, of um, your hand piecing. I've got some more patterns that I need to put out actually that you can use with those templates that I've been working on. There we go. So, you do that once. Now we're going to do that all again. So, I'm just pressing the corners again into the middle. Link's talking to the birds. Now this time I'm going to put a little pin there because phew, it's a bit hot. I don't have asbestos hands like my nanny used to have asbestos hands. Picking things out of the oven. you see your son eating the cactus? I never. I don't think cats are supposed to eat cactuses. I don't think he's a cat. Now, how many of those you need will depend on the size of the project that you're working on or you want to do. You can add, you, the thing about this project, which is nice, I like about Cathedral Windows, is that you can add to it as you go. So, um, as long as you've got the background fabric, you can sort of pick it up and, and put it down as you need to because you, it finishes as you go, basically. So what I've done, I've already sewed these two together. We need to open up one side and sew them together. Valerie is watching. Oh, hi Valerie. And Sarah said, that's just wrong. Your cat is not right. <laughs> it, it, he's not right. I, I'll admit that. 
And he even eats the ones that have quite spiny, hooked spines on them as well. You'd think it would keep him from eating them. Oh, what I'm doing now. So I want to sew, as you'll see it, sew these together along the fold. Now, I'm going to use my friction pen and my ruler to mark my sew line. You can, if you can see the fold, you can just follow the, the fold for your sew line. But I find it gets a little bit hard to see on the white. Belinda's watching. Oh, hi, Belinda. Diane is watching. So I'm just marking a line from the fold corner to the other fold corner. And it's my friction pen, so it will go away. I'll show you. So you can see there's my friction pen line there. If I just iron it, there, and it disappears. Magic. It is magic. I did notice, we watched, I watched a Darren Brown thing once and he did something with, with pens and heat and I thought, that's a friction pen. I know how you did that. And I've already got my line marked there. Valerie says she's loving the demonstration. Oh, yay. Sue is watching. Hi, Sue. Joanne says she loves the extra comments from, from Link. From Link. <laughs> He's talking to the birds. Um, I'm just going to pin it through the line just to make sure it gets all lined up. So I'm just going to pin it through here. Karen loves the quilt over the chair. Oh, thank you. Deborah is watching and Judith is watching. Hi guys. Hi, hi, hi. So I'll show you what I've been doing. We'll get to do some sewing in just a minute. There. Linda is watching. Oh, hi Linda. So, you can see that I've pinned my pin through the sew line on that side and through the sew line there. Kind of like I do when we I did the hand piecing, just to make sure everything's lined up. It's the same there and there. Now when I start sewing, what I'm going to do, I'll put a little mark, I'm going to start sewing about there. Because what I'm going to do, I don't have a lock stitch on this machine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my needle there. I'm going to come forward maybe a, a stitch or two. And then I'm going to reverse it to the corner and come back this way. Now the reason I do that is because then my tail ends of my thread are here. Sort of buried. So you can see I did it to there. So when I fold it over, which we will be doing, that tail end gets hidden inside the fold rather than it sticking out at the end, basically. So, put my needle down there. Anna's watching. Oh, hi Anna. Needle down, there we go. I'm just gonna go, actually one, two, and then backwards. There we go. Just following that line. Makes it a lot easier to, to mark the line there. And then when I get to the end, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna reverse about half an inch or so. There, so when I pull them out, when I cut those tails off, they'll be hidden. If there's any tails inside. Helen is watching. Oh, hi Helen. So, what you would do is continue with this as many as you want in a row. Once you've got your row as long as you want, you then need to do the same thing, sewing the rows together. I'm just going to put four together tonight. So these will get opened up and sewn onto there. So I just need to mark my lines. So you can see a cathedral windows quilt, if you want to call it that. You know, it's not technically a quilt. I'd say it's more of a, a coverlet. If you make a big one, it acts more of a coverlet because it, it is just fabric. It's just folded up fabric. There's no wadding inside of it. Um, it does make a really nice technique for the front of cushions. So it is quite decorative. 
Della is watching. Oh, hi, Della. Um, it makes it really nice for to make memory quilts as well. So with the little squares, which I'll show you, it's really nice if you have little squares of um, little girls' dresses or men's shirts or ladies' dresses, anything that's cotton, basically, you can use. And so you could actually just make one as your child or grandchild is growing up or little boys shirts Jane is watching oh hi Jane just pin in pin in pin in <laughs> Christine is watching Bob Ross at the same time <laughs> oh I love Bob Ross she's watching God yes we like we like Bob Ross I first watched him in the 90s when I was living in America. I thought, what is this? It was it was amazing, though. He's on Netflix now. He is. So I think, actually, Netflix and is, BBC. is ending. Yeah, I think Netflix is ending. But he's on BBC4 as well. If you haven't seen Bob Ross, you've got to go. you got to check him out. He's absolutely the best. And he's happy trees and happy accidents. And little critters that he... He's a gentle soul. Oh, I didn't get back to the corner. There we go. Monty's having fun in the bag. And they're in a mood tonight. Yeah. Well, they've been asleep all day. I told you. They've been snuggled up together asleep all day, and now they've all come alive and getting into trouble. Terry is watching. Oh, hi, Terry. Sue missed a bit. She went for a walk and it got rained off. Oh, yeah, it's been weird weather here today. It's been brilliant sunshine one minute and then literally tipping it down and even hail this afternoon the next. Christine says Bob Ross is on Vice. Is that oh, Muslim, oh. Muslim channel? We're not hip, yeah, we're not hip enough. We don't know what Vice is, sorry. Um, Jenny says Bob Ross is a brilliant painter. Yeah, he is. He is. And it's amazing. Michael's always amazed at how how does he do that? How does he, you know, use a few colours and come up with those amazing things? Hannah Laura is watching. Oh, Lorcan. Hi, Lorcan. Yes, Link. Yeah, Link now. So. All right, so. Put all my flaps back together. Now, what you would do, you would... I'm just going to have this bit, basically. But once you've got it all sewn together, you need to sew the middles down. Now you can do it by hand, but I find it's actually quite easy to do if I can find the right. That's the one. I'm just going to use my machine. I'm using my zigzag stitch, and I'm going to reduce it down to zero, basically. I'm just going to test out how wide that is. And Lorraine said they have thunder in Kent. Oh. And Christine is watching. Oh, hi, Christine. Oh, it doesn't want to go. Right, we'll give it a try. So, I'm just going to sew these tabs. Now I'm going to do um, as if you were doing like a four-hole button. If you understand what I mean, so I'm going to do across this way first and get these two and then I'm going to twist it around 90 degrees and I'm going to go across this way. Get those out of the way. Middle. 
hope this will be wide enough. It didn't really test out very well. It's a bit narrow, so I'm just going to up it to four, just to make sure I get plenty. Few times. Terry says good evening. Oh, good evening. And Karen is watching. Oh, hi, Karen. There we go. Right, again, I don't have the lock stitch on this machine. So. just cut this top this one off fine so to make sure that none of that comes undone what I'm gonna do is thread this through to the back and then tie it off that way And get it shredded. Right. No pressure, we are live. <laughs> Turn it the other way. Debbie is watching. Oh, hi, Debbie. And Natalie is watching. Oh, hi, Natalie. It's usually one side of the hole. There we go. One side of the hole is bigger than the other. There we go. Put that through there. I don't have one handy, but what I normally do, the same thing I do with my long arm quilting when I've got threads to tie off. I um, use a big eyed like tapestry needle and thread all of these through the same and then push it through to underneath where it's not going to be seen rather than cutting it off there because that might be a bit short. So I would normally do that. Carolyn likes your ring. Oh, thank you. My wedding ring. Michael's got one to match. Do this one. And then I'll show you the colored the colored bit. Wendy says you need self-threading needles for end sewing. Oh, that sounds like a, a good idea. I have to admit, I am getting to the point where I think I do need classes for close-up. Terry says it's very windy tonight in Lancashire. Oh. Oh, you must have gotten the wind we had earlier. Jackie says if you pull the thread on the back, the top thread will go oh, through yeah, yeah, to yeah. the back without threading a needle. Yeah, that's true, and I do know that because that's what I do with my long arm, actually. actually well, let's try that. Because that is true. So. Yeah, if you just tug on this one. It should be right on there. No, that's the other one. So it's this one then. There we go. There we go. Thank you. I did know that. I just needed a reminder. There. Just like that. Right then. So. This is the square that we're looking at, so I'm going to need a piece of fabric to go into this square. And 
for that, I have some already prepared. Lorraine says, um, we may be live, but it's like sitting down with good friends. Ah, thank you. I'm just going to use my breast press again, just a couple of squirts. Now this is what I want to aim for. So I've got a three inch square of fabric. Now I've got all the same fabric, but again, traditionally, you would have a mix of scrappy fabrics, basically, if you wanted. You don't have to, but that's what it traditionally is. So that's what I'm aiming for. Now, in order to do that, I've cut myself a two and a half inch square of cardboard, again, the crunchy nut. And I'm gonna do the same thing, lay it in the middle, except I've got this tin foil because I'm gonna use Joe Carter's handy dandy trick for folding and pressing. So I'm just folding that tin foil over flush with the cardboard so that my fabric gets folded over. Oh, link needs to come out now. Uh, I know why. He has a thing for tin foil. He has a crinkling. He's going to want to get in trouble now. I already gave you a piece of tin foil earlier. Also agrees about sitting down with good friends. Oh, thank you. Karen is watching. Hi. So I'm literally just folding it over. Just enough so I can get get my iron onto that quarter of an inch fabric. Yeah. <laughs> Joanne thought Nick was after the crunchy nut. Well, in most cases, he would be. Oh, yeah. He, I, yeah, I have to admit, I do give him... What? I do sometimes give him my, my milk dregs from the cereal. Yeah. He has a sweet tooth. What can I say? It's not good for him. Well, he doesn't get it very often. There we go. I'm just going to give that a little extra press from this side, just to make sure it's all belts and braces. Oop. There we go. Now that will sit right in here. And then we fold over these edges, give them a pin. And then you've got a couple of options for sewing them down. Well, it depends personal preference. You can do it by hand or you can do it on the machine. Now I'll be the first to admit I am not the greatest top stitcher. I'll give it a, I'll give it a go, but I would normally prefer to do it by hand. So I'll show you on the machine first. And then I'll finish it up by hand. I'll get these out of the way. Right, so top stitching. Christina says every time Link meows, Inky answers. Oh. <laughs> right, let's give it a go. <laughs> Diamond says one of her neighbors is playing techno music and smoking oh. pot. Oh. <laughs> Very off-putting when I'm trying to concentrate on the demo. <laughs> are, you, are you going Link or? Yeah, he's being... He's, he's confused. Just he... let him go. Behave. Right, this is the tricky part I find on the machine. Uh, hail, hailstone in Wigan. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, oh, okay. You definitely got what we had earlier. We had it about... Four o'clock, the hailstones. I was trying to get the sheets dried. And then it all came over really black and I thought, uh oh, I better get them in. 
and I'm glad I did because literally two minutes later it was chucking it down in hailstones. And says hi. Oh. Uh oh. Wrong stitch. I still had it on the on the on the um wide stitch. Let me just let me pick that. Yeah, it's lovely sunny now though. Calm and sunny. Apologize about it going in and out of focus. It's a it's a new new camera. There we go. Now, when you machine it, you don't have any option. You're gonna to have to machine it through all of the layers. Let's put that down. That's gonna work. I'm gonna do a couple of stitches back. And you're aiming for just sewing along the edge. Oh, this isn't working too badly actually. If you've got a machine that goes slow, it does make it easier. I've got it on medium, but I'll slow it down. And with the needle down feature as well. So I always have that on so that I can pivot if I need to. So you can see what I've done there. It hasn't actually turned out too badly. I'm quite chuffed with it. Diamond says Jack's in the house. Yeah, I love these. I've got about three. I can only, mm, I think I might know where two are at the moment. This one and one other one. Susan is watching. Julie hopes you're well. Oh yeah, I'm good, thank you. Hope you're good too. Surviving these crazy times. Joanne asks, is that a small stitch too? Oh, no, I'm just using two and a half, but you could reduce it down to two if you wanted. It seems to be working all right at two and a half. Now, if you really wanted, oh, I think I might have done it in the wrong one. I, this isn't stitched down. Did you on the wrong one? Yeah, I should have done it on that one. Oops. That's okay. Christina says she'll hand sew. Yeah, I, I think that's what I will. Because this is a bit... It takes practice, I would say, just to get the it right on the edge. I will get better with the camera. It's... <laughs> It does go quicker on the machine, I will say that, but it depends on your how comfortable you are. If you really wanted to, with, if you do machine stitch, you could actually add a little square of uh, wadding 
underneath this part to give it a little bit more weight and warmth. I'm not sure how, um, if that makes it trickier to sew down, it might. Now, if you're doing a big, big, bigger bit, you could actually just continue stitching onto the next one. If you're doing it by the on the machine. Cheers, Join. And Sandy is watching. Oh, hi, Sandy. There we go. stitch this down. That's got a nice five. Why is it called cathedral windows? Because it's it's supposed to look like stained stained glass. Oh I see. Especially if you have lots of different colours. Yes. Yeah. I didn't I, I sew, didn't sew this corner down. Oh, I need to increase it a little bit. There we go. Oh, and reduce this, reduce the stitch to zero length and full width. There, and then do this side. Ross says it's a clear picture here in sunny and windy South Derbyshire. Oh, nice. Sandy apologizes. She's a bit late. She had dinner. Oh. <laughs> Always catch up. That's what it looks like on the machine. So I'll, this is the one I should have done. You can do the same thing by hand. Link hair. Thanks, Link. Now if you do it by hand, you don't have to sew it all the way through, so you end up with a with a gap, uh, with a little pocket underneath, basically. Whereas this one, you've only got the lip because it's sewn all the way through to the other side. pocket you can make it like a little advent carol calendar and hide stuff in there i suppose you could oh, oh no no yeah i suppose you could you could put a little coin in there or something a chocolate coin laurie says well done looks great oh thanks laurie and yvonne is watching yvonne why yvonne Yvonne. Oh, Yvonne? Sorry. Yvonne. <laughs> so 
Hurry. Yeah, I'm quite chuffed with that actually, if I do say so. I'm usually not very good at top stitching like that. Right. Oh, I've got my beeswax. I can't remember if I talked about that when I did the, I think I might have done, I did the hand sewing last time. Just use that. So you literally just pull it through a couple of times. One, it keeps it from tangling too much. You can see it makes it more, a little bit more rigid. It gives it a little bit more strength. There we go. And just coats it nicely so it, it goes through nice. And this is the end that came I cut off. So that's going to be the end that has the knot. Thread. Right, so I'm going to start off So I'm going in between the two the two pieces of fabric. I'm going doing it like that again so I can hide my knot inside. Nobody sees it. And then fold that over. Natalie asks, what thread do you use to hand stitch, please? Um this one is an Aurafil 40 which is a quite a nice weight. Um, anything finer than that, so with thread, the lower the number, the thicker it is. The higher the number, the thinner it is. With needles, it's the opposite. The lower the number, the thinner it is. Um, that's a 40 weight. Jeanette apologizes oh. for being late. Oh, not at all, not at all. And Karen asks, is the beeswax on your website? Oh, yes, yes, I just got some in. So it is literally, I don't think it's, I don't think it's, I think it's fairly reasonable, actually. You literally just get a dispenser with beeswax in it. And I do have some beeswax that my friend Travis sent from his hives in California. So I'm, once that goes down a bit, I might have to melt it and see if I can make a refill. Um, Jeanette asks, what size needle? Oh, uh, good question. I think this is, it's probably a nine or a 10 sharp. So it's, this is one of the Roxanne needles that I have on the website. So the Roxanne needles, I really like the sharps. They come in a little vial, a little glass vial, which is really handy. And you get 50 in a pack, which is also nice because you get a lot. And yeah, those are the ones that I tend to use for hand sewing quite a lot because they're one of the packages is really handy. And the eye, I seem to, I mean, I did struggle a little bit to get that in, but generally I find the eye quite well made. So you don't have to struggle to get the thread in. Diamond says she loves the Tilda chicken. Oh, thank you. And Jackie says, I may have been corrected on Yvonne, but she was impressed with my pronunciation of Derbyshire. <laughs> yeah, well, he's he's been here for a little while. I've taught him well. He, he doesn't make the American faux pas that a lot of Americans do, because he's been told. <laughs> so he's been to Derb you've been to Derbyshire several times. You went, yeah. is that where Scaffold Pike? Kinder's Kinder. That's in Kendall. Yeah. Oh, I thought you went to Derby. And Buxton. And, oh, yeah, yeah. And Kinder Scout. With Nick that one time. Yeah. And the, um, the Plague Village, um, which is pretty apt for these times, which I forgot the name of it, which is actually quite interesting to go see. One day. 
So I'm just doing small stitches. You can't really see the stitches on these because I'm just doing. Edward says, love your demos. Oh, thanks, Edward. And Valerie has to go. She'll catch up later. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Watch on catch up for sure. It'll be on, on YouTube and it'll be on, on Facebook as well. EM. EM. Thank you, Judith. EM. Oh, that the plague village. The plague village. Yeah, so this is a little bit longer to do, but it does come up quite neat, and you can't see the stitches at all. It's a little bit easier to um. I find it easier to make it neat. You've got more control over it. But that didn't look too bad actually. It's just practice. Not that I've had tons of practice for this. I think I have, oh, I have, I don't think I've seen it, I think I've heard of it, the lady who did a black background and then the little squares, I don't know how she did it though, the little squares inside were of velvet, different coloured velvet, that would be nice. I don't know how you'd wash that though. I'm going to do the whole thing. I'm just going to do a little bit more of here. And then I'll do a recap. What time is it anyway? It's not yet dark, dark. <laughs> so I think that will be full over there. Hmm. Joanne says she likes the idea of this very much as I can part machine and then sit in the evening and hand stitch yes, definitely. in the squares. Yeah, and you can actually sew the squares together by hand, which I have done, but I actually like doing that bit better on the machine because one, it goes a lot quicker. Two, it's really stable, which I really like. When I did it by hand, I just whip stitched them together and it always felt a bit dodgy, for want of a better word. But uh, yeah, I do like the, um, the hand piecing. And sewing part. Thank you, Joanne. Joanne says it's 10 to 9. Oh, oh okay. So we'll do re a recap. So you can see. And Diamond asks, I'm sorry to interrupt, oh, no, no, no. no grape juice this evening. Yes, there is. And she loves the dress. Oh, thank you. I made it. It has pockets. Um, yes, I have the grape juice. Just haven't had much. So that's the machine one. You can see you just get the lip because it goes all the way through. But with the hand piecing, the hand sewn one, there's more of a, a gap underneath, basically. Um, so to recap... Natalie asks, what stitch do you use? Oh. I guess you'd call it a ladder stitch. I'll show you. So it's the same stitch that I use to do the binding on the back of quilts as well. So when I hand stitch the binding down, so I've, it comes out, threads coming out here on the, on the background side. I'm just going to put it right across there. So I'm trying to do straight stitches, if that makes sense. So I'm doing it. So I'll just come out there. So I'll pull that and then I'll go in literally right next to it. So my stitches are fairly straight across. I'm just catching the edge so you can't really see them very much and the same actually when I do applique as well it's the same sort of stitch so I, I probably a gap of about what quarter of an not quite quarter of an inch
making sure yeah, it isn't going through all the way. So yeah, just like that. And again, that's just the same stitch that I use to hand stitch the binding on the back of quilts. Carol says, great demo. Oh, thank you. Yet another project to add to my to-do list. Yeah, yeah, yeah. May try coverlets for new grandchildren due in oh. autumn. Oh, lovely, yes. That would definitely be nice. Or even just a, yeah. I think I'm going to finish mine and just make it as a cushion front. So it's not going to be that big. Barbara says she loves watching your work and all your oh, tips. You. Sandy also likes the dress. Oh, thank you. Yeah. And Jeanette really says, tough. yes, that is a ladder stitch. Oh, thanks. Yeah. Okay, good. Because I tend to make up words and I'm not sure whether it's the actual word or it's just the word that I made up for it. So. Joanne asks, if you were making this bigger, would you do blocks of four at a time and then piece them together? And would you make the whole of the white structure and then sew in the middle? Oh, that's a good question. Yeah, I think I probably would do smaller blocks and then attach them. Um, the only thing is, you'd be have to, so I've stitched this down now, so I'll have to undo that and undo that in order to get this up again. Otherwise, I'd have to hand sort of whip stitch them together. So you do have to kind of be careful. You do have to leave them loose, basically. So you'd need a bigger one. So if I had a more another row all the way around, basically, I can get these four in the middle done. But I can't actually stitch this block down until I get the other one. Where's my? Until the other side, because that overlaps. See what I mean? So I'll need to get the other side. Um, I think quilts, people tend to put them all together at the size that they want first. So it'd be easier for like a baby size quilt where you'd put them all together and then you'd hand stitch them um, because then everything would be, the prep would be all done if that makes sense. Because I've got to undo these now. So you could do that, but you need to make them a little bit bigger and then you'd only get those four in the middle and then you'd have to finish the other ones when everything is all put together. So you're going to have some hand stitching to do once they're put together anyway, or machine stitching, which way you want. Jenny says, that's lovely, thank you. Oh, She's having Wi-Fi issues, oh, no. so she has to go. Okay, well bye, we'll see you next time. I'm just going to recap for everybody the dimensions. So it's a 10 inch square of background and a nine inch square of card. And then you use that on top of that to, to put all the edges over. Um, there's my other one. It's a three inch square of color, which I then use a two and a half inch square in the middle to fold everything over basically. And that's that. And that's what you end up with cathedral windows but yeah have fun with that and do something over the, it'd be nice to see something other than white background i've kind of gone boring traditional but i think a, a navy blue or a black or something drastic in the background and then something nice and bright in the the squares would be nice you could have well. used black thread sort of like with stained glass with the oh yeah, yeah you could um I wasn't sure how good my top stitching was going to be, so you have to be really confident top stitcher to use a coloured thread because it really shows up. That's why I went with white because it, it, it blends. So yeah. Uh, Diamond says, so perfect for a layer cake project. Oh yeah, that would be good. You'd have lots of different coloured backgrounds then, uh, which would be fine. You could, oh, oh, that's a great idea. You could have lots of different coloured backgrounds and then you could make the squares white or black so that it would you'd really see the background colors that's a really good idea um kathleen asks she loves the dress can you okay. share what pattern you used oh, yes. and fabric too well the fabric i have to admit it's a viscose i got it off ebay um it's not the best i have to admit because i did find i've got i just found a spot here where there's a couple of bits where it's not quite a hole which is a bit disappointing but it was really to be cheap so i just wanted something nice summery thing when it was warm. The pattern is um, Closet Case Charlie's Kaftan. It's 
it's one of Charlotte Newland's favourites. And I've hacked it. So, I don't know if you can see this bit. Um, I've gone with the knee length. You can do a maxi, but I've gone with the knee length on this one. And then I've just added a ruffle on the bottom because it, I like that better. I did make another one all the way down, uh, a proper maxi. But yeah, it's this part is the only tricky part, I'd say, of it. This bit here. But other than that, it was really straightforward sewing. So yeah, I would check it out. It's one of my favourites. I think I've got three dresses out of this now, so far. So we'll see. Might, there might be more. Depends if the weather changes again. But yeah, so thank you, everybody. Um, hopefully you enjoy doing some cathedral windows. And cheers. And I will see you next week. Oh, if you have any requests for anything you really want me to do for next week or after, do let me know and uh, I'll put it on the list of ones that we want to do. So. Uh, Caroline asks, what do you do with the half ones on the outside? Oh, they just remain as they are. So um, I would have another one here. So you're going to have um, an edge of... of background basically so all around the edge you'll just leave them as is basically because there's not really a way of sewing a half of a one because you can't you can't fold it over so I suppose you could if you really wanted to I mean there's no rules where's my I thought I had another one I'll just use this so you could just do a half one I fold it over like that so then you've got a nice um, edge without any raw edges and then just hand sew that down so you could just do that pull that out so then that would go over there you wouldn't have any white over it but it wouldn't make that much difference yeah I might actually have to cut that off and just have it so because it's not so bulky on that. Just have it so you've only got a little bit folded over so that corner isn't so bulky. But yeah, you could do that. It's your quilt, as Bob Ross says, it's your world. You can do whatever you want in it. So yeah. So anyway, I'll see you next week. Let me know if you've got any requests. And yeah, see you later.